World-renowned physicist Michio Kaku reveals what really lies inside black holes. However, total destruction is not what awaits us at the heart of these bizarre mass monsters. Instead, we find a wondrous world that leaves us completely speechless. But how did Kaku uncover this gripping secret? How do scientists generally approach this highly complex topic? And will we one day even be able to marvel at the mysteries that lie dormant in black holes with our own eyes? Stay tuned until the end and find out with us. About six years ago, a boundless cry of joy rang out among astronomers. In April 2019, with the help of the Event Horizon Telescope, they were finally able to capture a black hole on camera for the first time. The groundbreaking image showed the gravitational monster that sits at the center of the giant galaxy, M87. And while the star cluster is about 55 million light years away from us, we should not forget one thing. Strictly speaking, what we can marvel at in the photo is not the actual black hole itself, but rather the brutal effects it causes in its surroundings. More precisely, there are the so-called accretion flows, or in other words, the matter that the mass monster attracts due to its extreme gravity. In fact, the term black hole already refers to the core characteristic of these unreal structures. They are invisible to the human eye, and that's for the simple reason that nothing that has passed the event horizon of such an object can cross it again from the inside out. And that includes light. But what is the reason behind this elemental property? How is it that these colossal objects irretrievably swallow everything that comes too close to them? Well, to understand why black holes are known as cosmic omnivores due to their inimitable gravity, we need to take a look at their incredible compactness. According to this, the gigantic mass of black holes is concentrated in a minimal volume. A small example, if a black hole had the same mass as the sun, its event horizon would have a diameter of just six kilometers. The actual diameter of our host star, on the other hand, is just under 1.4 million kilometers. The situation is even more manageable in the case of our home planet. A black hole with the mass of the Earth would be barely larger than a marble. Are black holes really machines of destruction? If you listened carefully, you will have noticed that the black hole captured in the image is located at the center of a galaxy. This immediately raises the fundamental question of how this is even possible. Wouldn't this destructive outgrowth of the cosmos have long since plunged its galactic surroundings into utter chaos? Well, not necessarily. In order to be sucked into the fatal pole of a black hole, an object must come into close contact with its event horizon. This marks the boundary around the gravitational monster beyond which nothing can escape its grip. But outside this death zone, black holes behave like all other massive bodies in the universe. As a result, they can be orbited without any problems. And it's now even considered certain that virtually every galaxy center is adorned by a supermassive black hole, with these monsters playing an important role in galactic evolution Incidentally, our Milky Way is no exception. Say hello to Sagittarius A star, which was also photographed for the first time in 2022 using the Event Horizon Telescope. The fact that these galactic centers have the word supermassive in their name refers to the fact that they exceed the mass of the Sun by millions or even billions of times. And while Sagittarius A star weighs in at around 4.2 million solar masses, the structure in M87 is 6.5 billion solar masses heavy. But when we look at the ludicrous creations that the universe has already produced elsewhere, even these giants are reduced to tiny specks of dust. After all, the black hole TON618 exceeds the mass of our host star by a factor of 66 billion. But as overwhelming as these unreal objects may be, they are accompanied by a major drawback. We don't know how many black holes of this size are formed in detail, and we certainly do not know what lies hidden inside them. What Michio Kaku says about black holes. Michio Kaku has a very special talent. He manages to explain complex issues in such a simple way that everyone can understand them. And of course, the world famous physicist who mainly deals with string theory was also aware of the significance of the images just shown, describing them as the holy grail of astrophysics. For Kaku, the question of the great unknown that awaits us beyond the event horizon of black holes is one of the most exciting and bizarre chapters in modern space exploration. But what actually happens when we unexpectedly plunge into such a mass monster? Will we be torn to pieces by the immense gravity? 
Would we then emerge in a different era? Or would we ultimately end up in a parallel universe? Well, one of the most exciting and at the same time probably strangest solutions to this question suggests that anyone who falls into a black hole is sucked through a tunnel that actually leads straight into another cosmic world. Kaku explains that this gateway to the parallel universe is called a white hole. The black hole and the white hole together form a so-called Einstein-Rosen bridge, better known to us as a wormhole. The problem, however, is that although wormholes are mathematically valid as theoretical solutions to Einstein's equations, we have not yet found any experimental evidence for their actual existence. The same applies to white holes. While they are the theoretical counterpart to black holes, they have not been proven to exist in practice. What these objects have in common is their so-called singularity at their center. Unlike their counterparts, however, white holes do not continuously suck in matter, they spit it out. More precisely, this would be matter that previously fell into a black hole and is then ejected by a white hole in another universe. Against this backdrop, however, it would be impossible to pass from the outside to the inside of the event horizon of these hypothetical structures. Behind the mirrors. Lewis Carroll was not an astronomer in the classical sense. And yet, according to Kaku, the British writer can help us to understand the nature of wormholes. All we have to do is think of the mirror in Alice in Wonderland. Anyone who steps through the mirror immediately finds themselves in a surreal world where common sense no longer applies. But first things first, in a normal, non-rotating black hole, as described by the Schwarzschild solution, there is a singularity at the center, or in other words, a point with infinitely high density. In a rotating black hole, as described by the Kerr solution, things are a little different, however. This time, the singularity is not a point, but a ring. The so-called Kerr ring is created because the black hole rotates so fast that space and time around it rotate with it. In other words, the rotation distorts space-time so much that the matter at the center no longer contracts into a point, but into a thin circular ring. The crucial thing, however, is that the Kerr ring could theoretically be passed through. So, we would no longer be confronted with infinite gravitational forces but with a structure that Kaku compares to the edge of a literary magic mirror. Because anyone who passes through the Kerr ring can be transported to the other side of the universe or even into the past. We would therefore be dealing with two universes connected by the mirror. In other words, the wormhole. But what would all this actually mean in practice? Could we one day use these cosmic bridges as shortcuts to another part of the universe? Or even as time machines to the distant past? Well. Kaku emphasizes that this exciting idea is not without its doubts. Skeptics argue that wormholes, if they actually exist, could be unstable due to their intense radiation and subatomic forces. As a result, a journey through a wormhole would not lead to the exploration of a foreign cosmic world, but inevitably to one's own death. Another point that should not be overlooked in this discussion is that Einstein's equations fail at the center of black holes or wormholes. The problem is that Einstein's theory only applies to gravity, not to the quantum forces that control radiation and subatomic particles. According to Michio Kaku, the key to overcoming this enormous hurdle is to find a theory that unifies gravity with quantum theory, or in other words, a theory of everything. One of the most significant scientific discoveries of the 20th century was that all physical laws can be summarized at a fundamental level by just two so-called formalisms. According to this, Einstein's theory of gravity provides us with a cosmic description of the very large, that is, of galaxies, black holes, and the Big Bang. Quantum theory, on the other hand, gives us insights into the very small, or in other words, into the microcosm of subatomic particles and radiation. According to Kaku, however, it's extremely ironic that the two theories can look so astonishingly different since even the greatest physicists in history have been unable to reconcile the two theories. Kaku describes this circumstance as one of the greatest jokes of the universe. In detail, the two approaches rely on different mathematical and physical principles to describe their respective areas of the cosmos. And although scientists have not yet achieved a definitive breakthrough, we do at least have a promising candidate in the form of superstring theory. Superstring theory combines gravity with a theory of radiation that is necessary to solve the problem of quantum wormholes. 
Here, the mysterious laws of quantum physics are explained by the fact that subatomic particles are in reality nothing more than the resonances of the vibrations of a tiny string. While the vibrations of a guitar string correspond to musical notes, the vibrations of a superstring correspond to the particles of the universe. The bottom line is that the cosmos is a kind of symphony of vibrating strings. And when a string moves in time, it deforms the fabric of space around it in such a way that black holes, wormholes, or other exotic solutions to Einstein's equations arise. The Ten Dimensions of the Cosmos However, an important characteristic of superstrings is that they can only vibrate in ten dimensions. These therefore offer sufficient space to accommodate both Einstein's theory of gravity and subatomic physics. According to Kaku, previous attempts to unify the forces of nature have failed because the four-dimensional standard theory is too small to squeeze all forces into a mathematical framework. Kaku explains why researchers in the past were like carp in a pond using the following example. For such a fish scientist, the cosmos consists of only two dimensions, length and width. Higher dimensions above the pond are beyond the carp's horizon. But when it rains, the surface of the water ripples. And although the third dimension is beyond their understanding, the pond dwellers can clearly see the waves moving on the surface. And by analogy, we earthlings cannot see the higher dimensions directly, but we can register their waves when they vibrate. According to this theory, light is nothing more than vibrations that propagate in the fifth dimension. And the more dimensions we add, the more forces we can accommodate. However, a major criticism of this hypothesis is that we cannot see the higher dimensions in the laboratory. Currently, every event in the cosmos, from the smallest subatomic decay to exploding galaxies, can be described by four numbers, length, width, depth, and time. However, proponents of superstring theory believe that the universe was already completely ten-dimensional at the time of the Big Bang. Only after the birth of the universe did six of the ten dimensions roll up into a sphere that is too small to observe. Fortunately, even 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, the subscribe button is still big enough for you to click on. So go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons so you never miss another video from us again. We'll see you soon.